I think, was it Chopin who told his students that the finger should feel like it's I long, said that. that. That's you. Well, you are I, Chopin. I said the I get thing. you and Chopin confused a, a lot. Well, I was Chopin, I know, so heard. there's no reason to get confused. Okay. <laughs> Seymour, I have a question for you. What? Uh, I see here that you have what appears to be a severed human hand, and I just Whoa. wanted you to explain yourself. Well, now, look, this will tell you whose hand it is. Uh -huh. It's your hand. Is there any question? It's clearly your hand. Well, now don't be upset. Mm -hmm. I t this is Chopin's left hand. Really? I used to be Chopin. You did? In another embodiment. Were you anybody in between Chopin and mm -hmm. Seymour? No. Or did it went straight from... Wow. It's enough to be Chopin, I want to tell you. Now, Chopin's... Left. By the way, yes. I, I told this to a pupil, a new pupil. Uh -huh. He never came back. <laughs> he probably thought I was a spook. Yeah, well, you are a spook. <laughs> um, it's interesting holding Chopin's hand. He was known for a very delicate approach well, to playing. as a matter of fact, Clifford Curzon had the original uh, cast of mm. it. A millionaires in Paris gave it to him as a present. He, you know, he had a studio built onto his mansion in London. Mm -hmm. It's not a studio, it's a concert mm -hmm. hall. And there was an illuminated cabinet. And I said, what's that in the cabinet? He took it out, put it in my lap. Whose hand is that? I said, oh, that's the hand of a woman. He said, it's Chopin's left hand. It's much thinner than this. Chopin's piano, his, the playel piano, mm -hmm. the octave was equivalent to our seventh. Really? The, the keys were narrower. So, you know, when he did this, he didn't have to stretch so far. See? So it's it's harder for us playing all these Chopin. Of course it is. Well, he, Chopin was a great teacher, and he taught a lot of amateur students. He's not like a conservatory oh, professor well, now, today getting students ready for competition. He, what do you mean, in, in amateurs? His fee was so high mm. that only the aristocracy could study with him. They weren't necessarily all... I mean, they were amateurs, they... They weren't professional pianists, but he would only teach gifted people. Hmm. Do you know he gave three lessons a, a week to each pupil? You think that's overkill? No, I mean, he... You would like to? I would love that. I don't think lessons are nearly long enough. In Juilliard, you know, the lesson is one hour. One hour, and then out the door. Well, everyone in Juilliard was a prodigy, practically. I wasn't. Well, you were f fabulous. <laughs> Your technique must have been finished, otherwise you wouldn't get in. Hmm. They wouldn't work with you on technique, did they really? Some, but technique is mostly something I had to discover for myself in a way. Of course, my teachers taught me so much, but I think for my body, maybe it's like this for other students, you have to... Figure it out for yourself at the end of the day. I think if you speak to every pianist, they'll tell you the same thing. We all figure it out for ourselves. I fooled my teachers. I played practice so well that they thought I had a wonderful technique. Technique. I had terrible problems. So and they, they never addressed them. You mentioned one of your problems, and it reminded me of my own problem, uh, and that's. Tense. Oh, the shoulders. shoulders. Yeah. And I love what you said in your choreography lesson, which is once you learn to re to drop your shoulders at the piano, you'll yes. realize you can take this lesson into real life and start dropping your shoulders. That's right. In any activity. While mama is serving you soup, mm -hmm. keep your shoulders down. <laughs> yeah. But I, I, it was all the way until my mid-20s, so we're talking two solid decades of piano lessons and piano practicing 
before I really started to let go. And your teachers never commented? They commented, that? but it wasn't enough of an emphasis. And I don't blame them because I had a lot of other problems. I had, when I was a early teen, I had flat fingers, I was tense in my forearms. Oh, so this they had a big the, job to do. They had a lot of work to do. Um, but, you know, so it was one thing at a time for a while, but I think a lot of times teachers forget about it the shoulders and they're often teaching from the from the forearm down that that's exactly right well mostly from the fingers down mm. do you think they don't pay enough attention to the arms well it's somewhat mysterious right like of course letting go here can allow a kind of weight transfer well the whole look here mm. this motion this motion mm. See the wrist undulating? Yes. That's one of the most important motions in all of piano playing. Because see, that's the greatest control with this long lever all the way from here. So now if I would hold you like this, and see, go up and down mm -hmm. like this, that's really injurious. I think, was it Chopin who told his students that the finger should feel like I said that. that. That's you. Well, you are I, Chopin. I said the I get thing. you and Chopin confused a, a lot. Well, I was Chopin, I know, so there's no reason to get confused. Okay. No, I said, you have the feeling that the finger is this long. Mm. And what, what, what message does that send a student to imagine that almost ridiculously long <laughs> finger coming from the shoulder to the finger? Well, Archimedes... Archimedes said, if I have it a lever long enough, I could lift the earth. So the longer the lever, the more control you have at the other end of it, naming, namely the finger. So see, if you're going to lower this note, watch what's going to go on here. See, I can actually ride the key down. Mm -hmm. And if I did this, it's almost impossible. Mm. If I go, it's going to leak out, this energy leaking out. No energy is leaking out. I've taught many lessons in my life, not quite as many as you, but I've noticed a, a classic problem with a, with a, beginner or early intermediate student, which is isolating the hand and the fingers so that practicing or playing becomes sort of a matter of almost typing on the keys and well yeah they think the keys are lowered like this mm. from the bridge down that's it right right and it's and what i always said was you know don't press don't push don't stab. These are all the wrong kinds of motions. It's, for me, it's a kind of drop or a fall. Mm -hmm. Do you see this? But uh, do you keep your fingers taut, T-A-U-T, or are they loose? I taught my students to keep their fingers taut, but yeah. that's, a, that's a real trick because I think one of the things that takes years of getting used to, to really develop one's artistry on the piano, tell me if you agree with this, is knowing how to be firm in some places and free in others. That's, that's true, yes. And so all I would ask a student, okay, feel taut or feel firmness in your fingertips, right? Make a shape, make a mold. But the mm -hmm. moment they did that, they gripped here too. It's like they couldn't find the, a way to be firm here and, and free here. I mean, there's tricks for this. Uh, having, well, yeah. if you're... In order to be firm here, you can, the only way is to contract this muscle because mm. there are no muscles here. Mm -hmm. So the point is, to what degree do you contract that muscle? Mm -hmm. But it has to be contracted. So you can't encourage the pupil, please try no tension here. Mm -hmm. Just put it in your finger. Can't. Well, There's no way to do that. You mentioned Tobias Mate. Yes. And I'm glad you mentioned the the book he wrote called the 
uh, visible the visible and, and the invisible. It's much shorter than his earlier book, The Art of the Act of Touch. I think is the name of it. But one thing he talks about in the Invisible Invisible is that there's actually small stabilizing muscles in the forearm that are active that simply keep us poised and balanced to begin with. And those do need to be engaged, but they're not they're not the bigger muscles that are No, they're very dangerous muscles. They're very mm. tender muscles. If these get activated, that's it leads to injuries right here. How do you work with a student, especially when they're you're just developing their foundations, to get them to to feel and carry their own weight? Because it seems indispensable for for progressing on the piano that you develop a an ability to actually hold your own arm. Do you find mm -hmm. this a struggle in, with your students? Well, for one thing, if I do, we were playing this nocturne, right? Yeah. If a pupil does this, right, like that, mm -hmm. or. Or they go, and they're not, they're not, uh, they're, there's no choreography of, mm -hmm. of rotation, and the fingers are either too loose or too stiff, or, and so this is what I do. Please pick up my hand from underneath and don't drop me. Pick me up. Lower me. Thank you. Now, I'm not squeezing. It was heavy. I'm, I'm resting mm. on this in the same way. Let's see, put your elbow here and just rest. Now, you know, if I picked you up, mm -hmm. uh, True. you would be very heavy, but you're are not you, pressing. Are you calling me heavy? <laughs> <laughs> but you're not pressing, are you? No, right? I'm just You're just resting. Mm -hmm. So that's what it is. I'll never forget <laughs> the worst teacher was Alexander Brylovsky. <laughs> Did you know he was the first pianist ever to play all, all the Chopin, Chopin work? works? He was an awful teacher. Mm. So I one day I asked him, I called him Maître, you know, Master. Mm -hmm. Maître, how do you produce that beautiful sound? Mm -hmm. So what, he took my arm like this. What do you mean, how do I produce my sound? It's an expression of my soul. It's like this. And he almost put a hole in my arm. Mm. He went like this, with real enormous pressure. Very similar to what we were just discussing here. So, so he yeah. knew that there was pressure. The Lechitsky school called it dead weight. You know, mm -hmm. they, they play with weight. I'm connecting the the key beds. I'm resting from one key bed to the next. Is it dead weight though? Because I, I I know that uh, Mate, it's not I, dead weight. Mate no. writes against the notion of dead weight because he no. says dead weight is no, it's not it dead. Falls too far. You do have to stabilize and stabilize. I just use that word because people call I, it dead weight. I used to tell students just drop your weight. It's dead weight. It's free and. They got a little confused, and I blame myself for this because they weren't sure how to which part of the arm or hand is holding yourself up. And this is where Mate says, "Well, there's actually small muscles active that allow you to stay poised, and then you can feel that dead, so to speak, dead weight channeling through." But this feeling See, is so hard for new as as much to find. energy that's going down. There are retroactive energy, mm -hmm. ret retroactive rocket. Right. Something's doing this. Look. Something's pulling up mm. at the same time to break the, f the friction. See, to break this. Mm -hmm. See? Mm -hmm. If not, yeah. you know, there's going to be percussion. You're going to hear this. How do we teach that? There are very few pupils who are actually going to achieve that. They'll try. That reminds me of Janos Starker. Mm -hmm. I knew a cellist. I played lots of chamber music in Maine 
with this cellist and a quartet in residence mm -hmm. there. He was studying with Janusz Starker, and he told me, uh, he played a theme for him, and Janusz Starker didn't say a word. He picked up his own cello and played that theme for his pupil, and he said to him, you will try, yes, but you cannot. <laughs> How do you like that? You That's will so try, yes, <laughs> but you cannot. So my pu this, this cellist was led to believe he could try all he wants and he's never going to succeed. These teachers, you know, in the medical profession, if there's malpractice, they're going to lose their license. That's what's wrong. Some of their students had great success, though. In spite of them. Mm. Don't you know, the really, really gifted people survive anything. Mm -hmm. they're, it, they're destined. It's biological. I wish that, and I, and I loved my teachers when I was young. I wouldn't be here without, without them. I wish if I had gone back in time and had been them, there was one thing I would have impressed more of, and it's not something I learned until, I really felt until my 20s, and I'm not sure if they could have done anything about it at the time. What? But it's, it's something that Rubinstein once told Polini. Polini asked Rubinstein, what's the secret to piano playing after a concert? How do you play the way you play? And he whispered in Polini's ear something to the effect of, you feel my fingers. It's more, it's what Berlowski said to you in a way. And it was just an intense amount of concentrated pressure and energy. He says, my fingers are extremely firm in the rest of me. Is oh, is that what and you I said play, to And I can play my whole, play until I'm 95 and I'm, I never get hurt. Now, there's a lot more to piano playing than that. But just well, Polini didn't need any help about no, he fingers, didn't. did he? No, he didn't. But he, he needed curious. help about getting ice water out of his veins. <laughs> that's, that's what he needed help with. Yes, his, his cold interpretations. I think it works well in the Petrushka, though. Oh, a fantastic please. recording, no? I, heard the, I gave him another chance. He went to <laughs> Carnegie Hall a couple of years ago. He started with the four ballads. Mm -hmm. I walked right out. I was so insulted. There's different approaches to Chopin, and I would say that yours is more of the poetic approach, and Polini's well, is... Well, what else can you do with Chopin except to be poetic? Fair point. Shall I play a little Chopin for you? Oh, you want to? I, I just want... I want you to Look, tell me what... Yeah. I'm already, you, I'm already failing. You will try, I, yes, <laughs> but you cannot. My father used to play this nocturne at least the opening phrases when I was Was a, your father a, a professional pianist? No, he's a professional chemist. Oh, is he alive? He's alive. And, oh, wonderful. And uh, he did play as a somewhat serious amateur when I was a kid. And then he had too many children and, and work, uh, too much work. So piano sort of stopped being a part of his life. But uh, when I was a kid, at least, I would sometimes hear in the middle of the night... in here today and it's the first thing I heard you playing and it just Isn't took me back. Isn't that coincidental? It That's is. so interesting. Now look here. Yeah. If you would analyze what you did, because mm -hmm. you can have it played back, you know, mm -hmm. almost every note except you did that beautifully mm -hmm. and then this, those three. That you change the dynamic. Mm. Other than that, almost all the notes are on the same dynamic. Glistening and beautiful, shining, beautiful sound, perfect hand to, uh, balance between the left and the right, but the right hand too much on the same dynamic. This F, right? Mm -hmm. 
you know, this, uh, how do we do this? Let's say we have one, two, three, four, we have four of them. Mm -hmm. I go. I do that. You can go. Which was good, good effect, but I like. Try to. You will try, that. but uh, I'll, I'll never you cannot achieve. do it. Good. Uh, My left hand is rotation. Right? Yes. One gesture. Okay, now, now look, now look, look, look. In between, no moving, moving before I play. The whole, like the bow of a violin, it's never going to stop. And not, so here in case you're making the exact correct choreographic gesture. Down, roll, roll, roll. But in between, you're stopping. So, an overlap. See, as you go up, that G flat is gonna lift by itself. See, it's mm. lifting by itself. There you go. That bears no resemblance to the other that you played. 